There's such freedom and surrender to God. If only we would just learn to surrender to him a little bit more. Oh, okay. <laughs> Melody, okay. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. As I had announced earlier uh, in the month, this is our Pastor Appreciation Month, and this is Pastor Appreciation Day. So still in the spirit of worship, we just want to honor our pastor, and we'll do a presentation at the end, but I just wanted um, to read to you from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and it says, but we ask you, brothers, to acknowledge those who work diligently among you, who preside over you and the Lord and give you instruction. In love, hold them in the highest regard because of their work. Live in peace with one another. And we urge you, brothers, to admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. Make sure that no one repays evil for evil and always pursue what is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice at all times, pray without ceasing, give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us to honor those that have um, shepherd over us, and so we thank God for the shepherds that he's given us. They're there at our happiest times of weddings and births and, and even at the, the saddest times when we have to say goodbye to a loved one. They're not just um, shepherds on Sunday, but they're with us through the week. Um, they're our friends. And so God asked us to set aside um, um, days. Well, he didn't ask set aside days, but just to keep them in prayer, hold them up, honor them, and that is what we want to do today. So I had said we were going to take an offering, so I'm going to have Jared do that now. And I, I um, hope that you have prayerfully asked God what your gift should be, and let's just honor him today with this offering. And then at the end, if I could just have a minute to present it to you. <laughs> so, go ahead. Yep. We'll pray at the end. We'll pray over the pastor. And I just want to thank all you for participating. And um, I know he, he actually asked me, downplay this, downplay this, because he's very humble and he likes to honor others rather than have the attention on him. And I just uh, appreciate that in him, but we still want to honor him and give thanks to him for all that he's done, for the vision God has given him for us in this church. And thank you for helping me do that. No, he's... Afterwards, okay. So, okay. Make sure you're still here too at the end. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you all. So, so after that, I'll suck in my gut so you can read my shirt. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, uh, well thank you, and and we really do appreciate that. We'll come back around to that. But let's turn our, our attention to the Word of God for, for a few minutes, for the next uh, 20 or 30 minutes, whatever the Lord has. Let's just turn our attention to the Word of God. We've been talking about uh, being guided by God. Uh, last, uh, last week, Linda shared, uh, but uh, for several weeks before that, we took a couple weeks talking about being guided by the Holy Spirit and then being guided by the Bible, the Word of God. And now we're going to just kind of, for, for this week and maybe one more week, we'll see, we're going to uh, transition into some of the other ways that God le guides us and leads us, though uh, certainly the primary ways that we want to be led are the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Uh, those are the two primary ways. You know, we were just, uh, um, and, and let's just start there with those for just a minute again. Uh, Delany was sharing how she saw a meme that was circulating Facebook, 
how someone was, you people were putting how, you know, uh, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was, uh, love the character of Jesus, not the Bible. It's hard to believe that people can actually think that way, but they were putting obscure, like, Old Testament scriptures up that they, you know, were saying how Jesus said, you know, like, like for instance, an eye for an eye, you know, and, and, but Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, you know. So they were saying, separate the Bible from the character of Jesus. How foolish and how uninformed that is. Now, I know that there are Old Testament passages that take a little bit of study to understand why they're there, and there are things that from today, we call this the zeitgeist, or the spirit of the age is what it's called. We have a particular way of looking at things because of the day, the culture, the people group that we're a part of. It's what we grew up in. And, and sometimes when you look at something from 2,000 years ago on the other side of the planet, you know, it's apples and oranges, and it takes a little bit of study to understand what was really being said and why that was happening. So be careful pulling up something out of Scripture and then saying it doesn't line up with Jesus. Because there's not two different gods. There's one God and three persons. And we'll talk about that Wednesday, actually, uh, a little bit. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, one in person, but uh, also distinctly three in personality as well. But the Word and Jesus don't go against each other. That's foolishness. That's, and Jesus was not against the Old Testament. That's foolishness. What Jesus railed against was the traditions of men which nullified the Word of God. There were something like 632 or somewhere around there, uh, rabbinical uh, requirements and traditions that man had put on things that may have been okay, but it's one thing to say they're okay. It's another thing to say that they came from God. And Jesus, you know, uh, railed against those traditions. And there are some passages in the Bible that are hard to understand. Well, if you really care, you'll study it and you'll figure it out because pretty much you can figure it out if you do the put in the time, you know. But be careful. That, that's the enemy would love you to accept the Jesus that's not in line with the Word of God. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you accept the Jesus that's not in line with the Word of God, that's an AI Jesus, artificial intelligence Jesus. I mean, you, you could take, and you, you could nowadays, you could take artificial intelligence, and you could reconstruct an image of me, and you could copy my voice, and you could put it on there, and it could say anything you wanted to say. You could say, Pastor Dave, well, I, and, and maybe I had nothing to do with that. It was just completely reconstructed through AI. Well, that's in a sense what people want to do to Jesus. We love a Jesus that we agree with. Woo! Amen, right? A Jesus that sees everything like I see everything. Oh, blessed, loving Jesus, right? But make sure that you're believing in the right Jesus. And the way that you're going to believe the right Jesus is by the Word of God. Come on. Every time you read it, you find out it teaches you that there's something special about this book, about the Word of God. And so when we talk about God's guidance, we have to center on the Bible. The Bible will guide you a whole lot more than you might think it guides you. You might say, well, it didn't speak to you know, this particular thing. Well, maybe, maybe it didn't give you your name and your address and, and the problem that you have with your, your sister's boyfriend. But I bet if you look at the circumstance, you can find something in the Word that will speak to the circumstance. Because it is there. Uh, so the Word is important. And the other thing that's important, as we've talked about, is the Spirit of God. We have to learn to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is a person. He's not just a force. The Spirit of God and the Word of God will be in unity. The Spirit of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit will be in unity with one another when they speak. And, and sometimes we approach God in a way that we say, well, if I could just hear God. Everyone's probably said that. But God doesn't speak to me. I don't hear God. But, but you're wrong. God does speak to you. God does speak to you, and you do hear God. But uh, maybe you're not listening, or maybe you haven't trained yourself 
to hear his voice. Because you know what the surest witness in the whole world is? It's the witness of the Holy Spirit. The witness, I'm telling you, if my wife, I love no one more than my wife on earth. If my wife were to come and tell me something, and I would believe her wholeheartedly, but I would believe the Holy Spirit more than I'd believe my wife. There's no witness stronger than the Holy Spirit. None. Now, we have to learn to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's what these last uh, several messages have kind of been around, is learning to know His voice. But God speaks, and He's there. Now, one of the ways that we learn to hear God is by waiting upon the Lord. And that's kind of where we're going to start out in the new territory here this morning. We need to learn to wait upon the Lord. Because God is God. We're not... (laughs) God operates on his timetable, not ours. God has his reason for doing things, and it doesn't always uh, happen as quick as we want things to happen. So turn to Psalm 25, (coughs) if you would. We're going to read a portion of it, probably not all of it. Give me one second. Psalm 25. So again, we're talking about being guided by God. Some of the ways that God speaks to us. Now, we're not going to read the whole of Psalm, whole of Psalm 25, but I would encourage you to prayerfully do that and meditate upon it on your own. But let's just read this portion, verses 4 through 10 of Psalm 25. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. (coughs) So right there, when we just start in those verses, we see the humility of David. He's asking God to show him his ways and to teach him his paths. So when we talk about hearing God's voice and being led by the Lord, and whether it's the Word, whether it's the, the Spirit of God, whether it's circumstances, other people, the ways that God's speaking to us, the first thing we have to do is we have to have a humility that will allow us to hear God. Do we, wanna, do we want God to teach us? Do we want to hear God? Do we want to be led by God? Okay, because you and I all know what it's like having a conversation with someone who doesn't want to hear you. We've all been there, right? Wave your hand at me if you've been there. When you're trying to talk to someone and trying to teach them something and they don't want to hear you. And you're talking, but they're not hearing. And maybe they're hearing you and maybe they're even nodding their head at you, but they're not hearing you. And you say, well, you know, uh, 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 not my wife. This is not my wife. This is other wives possibly in the room, but not my wife. So husbands, get ready to get your wives. So, you know, no, I got to switch it because it would be husbands more than wives. Okay, so it would be other husbands. It wouldn't be me. But husbands, the wife will say, I talked to him and I told you that five times and you just now heard me. Now, I don't have that problem, but some of you other guys got to get it right because some of you guys got that problem. Your wife says, I told you and I told you and, and you just now hearing it. Well, she was talking and we were hearing, but we weren't really hearing, right? And sometimes for a guy, just for the women's sake, it's not that we don't hear you. We did hear you, but we're still wrapping our mind around the situation. We're processing. Sometimes she's like, I told you to hang that picture, you know? Five times, and now you're just doing it 20 years later. Well, we were wrapping our mind around the situation, all right? We were learning the positioning so we could do it right the first time, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so <clears throat> I've kind of lost my point altogether here. But the point is that God is speaking to every one of us. Those, especially those that are his children. We're talking about those that have accepted Christ and have a relationship with Jesus. God is speaking to us. God is not silent. God is speaking to us, but so often we're not listening for whatever reason it is. We're not hearing God. But if we'll teach ourselves to hear God, we will. Now, I'm going to teach you something that is so simple. This is what's, what's interesting about God. As infinite and complex as God is, he's so simple. He, I mean, he is so down to earth and so simple in so many ways. So look, I stopped a little bit earlier, but look what the verse says. It says, show me your ways, teach me your paths, lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Now look at the end of the verse. On you I wait 
all the day long. If you go through this psalm, you will find three times where David speaks of waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. Now, David is not talking about waiting upon the Lord the same way I was talking about hanging that picture. All right? David is talking about waiting upon the Lord to hear things in God's way, to see God's paths, to, to grasp God's understanding, to, to be led in the truth of God. Okay? David is saying, I'll wait upon you, Lord, to help me understand this. I'll wait on you, Lord, to expose your plan in this. I'll wait upon you, Lord. I, I, think that it, I think I could say with very, very, very high level of confidence that one of the biggest things missing in all of our lives in this place today and in a lot of the Western church is we've forgotten how to wait on God. I mean, when we talk about... See, see we... we, we we're, especially those of us that are task-oriented, we want to get it done. We're like, I don't want to wait around. I got stuff to do, you know? I, I got stuff to do. Okay, God, just, uh, okay, God, I got up this morning. It's, it's six in the morning. I got up. I went to your word. I listened to you. Go on, give it to me, God. Go give it to me because we got stuff to do. I got to get on to doing stuff. Now, it's good, it's good to, to have that morning time and do that, but David says all the day long, I'm waiting upon you, Lord. He's looking for those indications and those sounds of God's voice throughout the day. And when he's not hearing God, he's just going to wait until he does hear God before he does something. You know, we get here on a Sunday morning, and, you know, we, we say that we're not liturgical, but we kind of got our ways. We pretty much know we're going to be out, you know, by 12 o'clock, and the day's going to go on, and we got our, our things uh, planned out. <clears throat> That's okay. To a degree, that's okay. But, but David said, I wait upon the Lord. What would look, things look like if in our lives we learn to wait upon the Lord? Now, I know that sometimes a name is controversial, but you look at someone like Catherine Kuhlman, who had a powerful healing ministry. No matter what you think about the woman, the woman, a lot of people got healed by the woman in the 70s and 80s. You say, well, I didn't like this and I didn't like that. Well, okay. You can have that conversation, but you can't deny the fact of how God used the woman powerfully. But you know one of the things about her that would upset people? Was she would show up to the service, the service is at 7 o'clock, and if she felt like she didn't have an unction of the Holy Spirit, they were going to wait till she did. I mean, she would sometimes keep them waiting half an hour, an hour. They would do worship. She'd just say, keep doing worship. But when Catherine Kuhlman felt like she entered into the, had waited on the Lord and entered into that place where she felt God, then poof, spirits fall in, people are getting healed all over the place. Now, you could try to produce that all of your life and never get it. But when you wait upon the Lord, so much happens. The prophet, hey, all the great ones got it. The prophet Isaiah said, those that wait upon the Lord will what? Renew their strength. And they'll not even, not just be renewed, but they'll mount up on wings like eagles. You're going to go to a higher place by waiting on God than you're going to go any other way. I've said it before here, but the great American evangelist, Jonathan Edwards, he was the first American philosopher. He was also one of the great preachers of history. Revival fire followed the guy everywhere that he went. But as busy of a man as he was, they said that often you would find Jonathan Edwards sitting in his chair for hours a day with the Bible open. Didn't look like he was praying. It wasn't some aesthetic, some, uh, some euphoric experience. He was just sitting there waiting on God. But when the man would get up and preach, the fire would fall. God's never late. They used to say the Queen of England's never late, right? <laughs> Now we say Donald Trump's never late, right? Even though, I know, I know I'm upsetting people. Not too many, though. But it's okay, get rattled. But like, like if, if, if Donald Trump is coming and you're waiting in the rally for Donald Trump, and if he's a half hour late, you may not like it, but you already know you're going to be there all night anyway. So you're just going to accept the fact that he's going to show up when he shows up. That's, if you go to a Trump rally, that's why you went. Right? 
you went, so you just already got your mindset that you're going to... Now, I know that you all think it's about Trump now. That's not what I'm even talking about. I'm illustrating. Okay? When you go, when you go to hear from God, that's why you went. It don't matter if God shows up right then, praise God. But if you sit there and you're in God's waiting room for a few hours, you would sit in there for a doctor. You'd sit in there to get some prescription from a doctor. And, you know, you're sitting in there three hours in this doctor ever on time. And then you go to the office and, you know, uh, you, you get all the aides and all the people you don't care about. And you get like one minute with the doctor. Look, you weren't there for anything but the doctor. And because he's an expert in what he does, the one minute was worth all of the wait. And yet, we need to learn to wait upon the Lord. And I'm talking, now, I'm talking about coming to God without all of our agenda and saying, God, I want to hear you. Now, the, that last uh, men's speaker that we had kind of touched on that a little. I loved that. You know, he, uh, I don't even, can't even tell you his name right now. Dave would know. That guy, I'm sure that he's coming to some pretty great wealth and, and things. And he was telling me he got that because he would go pray and he would sit down with his notepad and he'd write down what God told him. Well, pastor, I want to secret the wealth. <laughs> Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. God will speak to you. Those who wait upon the Lord... And David says it three times here. I didn't even get through this passage yet, did I? Okay. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. And teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. Or my transgressions, but according to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O oh God, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore teach sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenants and his testimonies. All his paths are mercy and truth. God, teach us your paths. Teach us your ways. Speak a word to us, God. Give us the diagnosis, Lord God. Give us your presence, God. Because it's worth waiting upon the Lord. Uh, I'm struck when I look at David's life, as busy as he was, and all the conflicts that were going on, and all the wars that were going on, and all the running, and the hiding, and everything, but in the midst of all of it, if you read it, there's a thread that goes all the way through David's life, and he would wait upon the Lord. He would wait upon the Lord. Now, the idea, it's not a passive idea. It's not like wasting time. It's not, not like a vacation. You're waiting until God shows up and gives you counsel. And once you get the counsel, God's words are worth more than any counsel of man. Because God is the expert of experts. God is the expert on everything. There's nothing that God can't fix or heal or make right or unbend. God is the expert. So we're waiting upon the Lord uh, to show us. So as we talk about the guidance of God and all these things, we not, we've got to learn to wait. Let's hit a few ways that God uh, does speak to us. First of all, he guides us by his people. Colossians 3.16 there says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, which is the Greek word Sophia, by the way. It's a great word. It's a great name, Sophia, for whatever reason I'm saying that. In, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart, to the Lord. So uh, the word wisdom, of course, is differentiated a little bit from knowledge. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply it. And like we just heard uh, while we were driving on an audio book this week, that if you have uh, knowledge but don't have wisdom, it doesn't do very good, very much good for you because you got, you got the information, but you don't know what to do with it. 
And if you have wisdom, but you don't have knowledge, it also is a little tough because you're seeing things, but you don't have the knowledge of how, how to, to build up to that. But God guides us in wisdom and knowledge. Now, God uses other people. You're in this church for a reason. Now, I don't say that uh, controllingly, like, like some pastors are like, God put you in this church, you better stay here forever. And you're out of the will of God if you go anywhere else. You're not going to get that here. Okay, because that would be so hypocritical. God's moved me to different churches. This is the fifth church that I've been a senior pastor at in my lifetime. All right, and, and either I missed God or God moves us around sometimes. All right, but what you've got to do is make sure that it's God moving you around. Because God isn't going to move you just because the circumstances get rough a little bit. God is going to speak to you in these ways that we've talked about through his word, through his spirit, and, and he's going to let you go out in peace. And he's going to let you be received in peace when the time comes. If it's, in, if it's in conflict, then it's probably not God's time. Let's just be honest with that. You need to wait on the Lord and hear the Lord. Uh, but if there's a time where God's leading and it is the Lord, then you should obey God, not man, and do what he says. But, but how do we, again, how do, how do we uh, apply this when, when other people are speaking to us? And unfortunately... A lot of the times when God is speaking to us through other people, how do I put this? It, not a lot, how, Help me, Lord. A lot of times God uses the abrasiveness of other people to speak to us as much as he uses the gentleness of other people to speak to us. <clears throat> um, I don't know how to put that any other way. Now, I, I want to be that, an encourager. I want to come, come to you and speak nice words to you. And, and that's what our goal is as, as believers for one another. But God will use very abrasive people. But if you're listening, you'll have to say, okay, Lord, I hear you. I may not agree with them, but I hear what you're saying. But what does he say here? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, with all Sophia. Um, so... I don't remember, I just remember someone sharing a story once of, uh, of where uh, a guy was, they put speed bumps in their church parking lot, and a guy maybe wasn't aware of that, and he hit the speed bump and bottomed out his car, and it was, you know, that noise that you hate when you hit a speed bump, and the window's down, and the pastor's out there, and the guy just lets the pastor have it. You messed up this whole church, and this whole place is a mess, and blah, 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 blah. And, and thankfully, uh, Though the pastor wanted to uh, not, he, let's just say he didn't want the wings of an eagle. He wanted another bird for the guy. But uh, he, he, he instead, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit checked him. And he, before the guy could pull off, he, he tapped on his one and said, wait, wait, wait. He said, man, he said, I'm so sorry for what just happened there. He said, we put those in. I'm sorry we didn't, like, put enough signage or whatever. But he said, he said, what's really bothering you? What's really bothering you? And right there through the car window, the guy starts crying and opening up about problems that have nothing to do with the church and nothing to do with the pastor and nothing to do with the speed bump. God was using, and you know, sometimes we're so caught up in what we're doing that we miss that stuff. Thank God that, you know, but God, God uses people God uses other people to speak to us, even people that we don't agree with, even people that are abrasive at times. And uh, maybe for that pastor, and I know this could be a word for me, maybe he was just saying, hey, slow down a little bit. Slow down and listen a little bit. Now, ideally, you know, we want to say kind words to one another. But, but in order to hear the word of God from other people, notice again where it starts. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. So let the wisdom of the word of Christ dwell in you. Because we all know that if we just listen to other people, you can get messed up, right? The prevailing opinion, right? So, well, I don't know if it's true or not, but, but, but according to what I've heard lately is that all women support abortion and that all men hate women, and so men that don't support abortion hate women. That's the prevailing uh, theory that I'm hearing. Would you women agree with that? Well, I'm just listening to people. Well, well, look, let the word of Christ dwell in you, all right? Let the word of Christ dwell in you. And the word of Christ dwells in me to say, even though that's what the people are all saying, 
That's not the truth. <laughs> How many women would say, hey, you don't represent me, right? You don't represent me. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not a baby slayer. I mean, I'm sorry. I know God loves the sinner, hates the sin. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But the word of Christ has to dwell in you. And as the word of Christ dwells in you, then you're able to hear other people. And you're able to see through the, the facade or the mask or the circumstance. And you're able to really hear people. But again, that comes really by waiting upon the Lord, letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly so that the word of Christ can see through that stuff. And then when we're rooted in the word of God, what happens is that God will use people to guide us. There is a reason that you're a part of this congregation. I, Lord, forgive me if I, I, I didn't communicate that well. Let your word go forth. But, but God does bring you here together with other people for that reason. And not just here, but other believers I've said this, and I, I've heard many other people say it. Uh, um, one lady in particular who's with the Lord now uh, uh, that used to say to me, uh, she used to say, Pastor, I watched so-and-so on TV, and he said just what you said in your sermon. And then I, I watched, uh, you know, this, uh, I watched Joyce Myers, and she said the same thing that you said. And I watched whatever. Well, I didn't, I didn't watch all those people before church. You know, I didn't go in and see what Joyce Myers and Joe Osteen and T.D. Jakes and whoever else is saying so that I could do that before church. Well, what was happening was through many voices, probably their servants were probably nothing to do with the same thing as mine, but God was through his people. She was hearing the same thing no matter where she went. God was speaking to the lady through the voice of Peter. Do you see that? And I'm not saying that's always the case, but a lot of times it is. You know, like you're listening to something, that's just what pastor said, or that's just... Now, just pause for a minute, because God might be using that to speak to you. Maybe you're hearing a rhythm in things, and maybe it's not just the talking points where people are saying the same thing. Maybe there's a rhythm uh, from other believers that you're tapping into where the Holy Spirit's speaking to you about that. Okay, always again, listen to the Spirit, test it by the Word, let the Word of Christ dwell originally in you. But we've got to learn uh, to detect this. And we're, we're going to wrap up soon, because we'll next week come back to some of this. But when he's guiding us by his people, look at this verse. We love this verse, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I like that translation. Uh, there, that's the New King James. But as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Now, obviously, he's not just talking about men. He's talking about men and women here. Uh, you, you know, together, we sharpen each other. We make each other better. I mean, sometimes we grate against each other. But when we grate against each other in the Lord, we're sharpening each other. We're making each other, we're making each other uh, better. You know, uh, when, when my wife, my lovely wife, tells me things that maybe sometimes I don't agree with, but believe it or not, I'm hearing her. But what I'm probably hearing when that happens is not just what she's saying. I'm probably hearing things that other people feel and don't have the courage to tell me. Come on. And if I can hear her, because I trust her more than anyone else. If I can hear her, iron sharpens iron. Right? This is making sense to anyone? God speaks to us through other people in the congregation. We have to weigh what we hear according to the word of God. If you're hearing something that goes against the Bible, it's not of God. All right? If you're hearing something uh, far out, Actually, I want to go to this next point. We can do this in like less than five minutes. I promise we can. But I want to end after this. This will be our ending point, is uh, speaking about prophecy, because it, it segues with this. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 21. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test all things and hold fast to what is good. So uh, not every time that we hear God through other people is a prophecy. All right? But there are some times where we're hearing a prophecy through other people, and God is trying to speak to us. Now, just because someone, uh, just because there's a prophecy doesn't make a person a prophet. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, so uh, we're still missing Gary here, so I can't pick on him. Hmm. Oh, there you are at the back, sitting at the back, backsliding. Okay, so, so uh, Gary, okay, Gary, the last two Wednesday nights taught. Good job, by the way, Gary. He taught the last two Wednesday nights. Now, Gary taught, but he's not the pastor. He's not a pastor. Do you understand that? Even though, we, Gary, even though Gary taught the word, he's not a pastor. Okay, people can prophesy without being a prophet. Do you understand this? Every time, God, God can use any one of us. If the Spirit of God is in you, if you're saved, then there are times when God will give you a prophetic word. Sometimes you just don't recognize what it is. You kind of feel it in here, and sometimes you release it. It's like a fire shut up in your bones. God will use any one of us to prophesy. But people are afraid of that. You know, because they're, they're afraid of, uh, of what the implications. They don't make you a prophet, all right? There are some people that God called to a, a prophet where it's kind of like they can just really seek God and, and he really, uh, hear God, and it's like, boom, okay? But not everybody's a prophet just because they prophesy. So notice that this is not speaking of how to treat the prophet. This is speaking of how to treat prophecies. Now, we could... You know, we could apply this to the prophet, but, but I'm saying when you hear a prophetic word from another believer, okay, this is how we treat it, uh, how we're to treat a prophecy. First of all, don't quench it. Don't quench the Spirit of God. Don't quench the Spirit of God. You know, God tells us to do things decently and in order, and there are things as a pastor that he tells me and leadership of the church that he tells us. And we try to organize and be decent because God tells us to do things decently and in order. But I'm just the under shepherd. Okay? There's a king. <laughs> there's a lord. And I'm not him. All right? So God is able to govern his church. Would you agree with that? People say, well, I'm afraid of the gifts of the Spirit. I'm afraid of prophecy. I'm a... they got different reasons. Some people say, well, those stopped back in Bible times, which is bull malarkey. But people say, you know, I, 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 I'm afraid of... You let people start praying for one another. Crazies will come out. And you let people start giving a prophetic word. Craziness will happen. Listen, God's big enough to handle this church. Do you think that God can't take care of you? <laughs> Now, some people just need a little guidance, you know? But if, if you're going to be mean and vindictive and self-seeking, you think God can't take care of you? If you want to bring some pile of horse manure in here and say it's God. Hey, have you ever read a story called Anias and Sapphira? God can take care of his church, if that's your motive. Now, we need to listen to God, and we, you know, we, wanna, we want things to be decent and in order according to the Word, but don't quench the Spirit. Let God move. Because I, I'm, just a, I'm, I'm old school in the sense that I just kind of feel like if the presence of God wasn't here, why come? I mean, the presence of God will do more even if he uses broken vessels. Even if we miss it on a, on a point or, or we, we're, God will do more when you submit to the Spirit through a broken vessel than he'll do through some old polished stone who's hard-hearted and, and, you know, rigid and it's not, you know... Uh, don't quench the Spirit. Believe that God is big enough to govern His church. But then obey the Spirit. As leadership, we look, and if things are far out that aren't of God, then we, you know, not based on our authority, but based on God's authority, you know, sometimes we want to check those things. But don't be afraid. Let God govern His church. Don't, don't quench the Spirit. It means to throw a wet blanket on the Holy Spirit. And, and really, the word quench has to do with an ongoing offense. It's something that you've just accepted because it's been there for a long time in your life. It's an ongoing offense. And don't despise prophecies. That's in black and white. How do you say it more clear than that? Well, I don't despise prophecies. I just don't think people should be speaking. You're despising prophecies. Let, let God give the word that God wants to give through the person that he wants to give it. I know people hate this sometimes when we say this, but do not forget that God spoke through a donkey, <laughs> all right? <laughs> and if God can speak through an ass, because that's what they're called, <laughs> then God can still speak through an ass, I'm going to tell you. Okay, how do I say that any, any other way? <laughs> 
God spoke through a donkey, and he could still speak through a donkey, all right? Don't despise it. But then what are we to do? What's it say next? Test all things. You test it. So you're hearing it, but then you test it. How do you test it? Well, first of all, of course, through the word of God. You test it. Does this contradict what the Bible says? If it does, then uh, it ain't God. But let's, does this contradict what the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you? Because if it does, it ain't God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now, if God's already been speaking to you to be a missionary, to leave everything and go to Africa, sail the ocean, go to Africa, and then uh, establish a mission on the Cape of Good Hope. And then you're already thinking about that. You haven't really maybe talked to people, and you're thinking about that. And then someone comes to you and says, man, brother, I really feel like God is telling you to branch out and become a missionary. Now, you might want to listen to that. It doesn't mean that it's God. But you might want to listen to that. But if you've never in your entire life had a thought of leaving Canton, Ohio, <laughs> and someone gives you that word, it's probably not God. Because most prophecy confirms what God's already speaking to you. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit's bigger than the person speaking to you. So there's already some speaking happening in the Holy Spirit, and then the per God may use the person to bring some clarity to it. But it's... If it was something that you've never heard before in your life, and, it's, and, and you're getting that, then you better test that thing really hard. But don't despise it. You know, just say, thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. I'll pray about that. And mean it. But don't despise it. And then what's to say? Hold fast to what is good. Is this going to make me better and the people around me better in the end? That's what you do with, with a word of prophecy. Am I going to be... Better for this word? Is my family going to be better for this word in the end? Or is this something that's going to cause a lot of trouble in my family, a lot of trouble in my life? Because if it's going to stir everything up and kick a hornet's nest, again, it could be God, but it's probably not God. Probably not. But you're going to have to test it. You hold fast to what is good. So, very simply, we're, again, this morning we're talking about when God speaks to us through other people. Let me make that clear, because God uses the congregation. God uses other people to speak to us. Here's how you test it when it's a, a prophecy, but also you can test just the conversations with people. Don't quench the spirit. Okay, does Jesus have the authority? Number one, uh, don't despise it. Am I just mad because I don't like it? Or, or is there something to this that I need to hear? Test all things through the word, through what the Spirit's saying to me, through those that are closest to me, and then at the end, hold fast to that which is good. Because at the end of the day, what God told you to do if you obey God will be for your good. It will be for your good. Because he loves you so much. He did everything for you. But that's how you treat a prophecy. So uh, we're going to kind of, we're in there. I will, uh, I'll pick up there next week. So we're going to head for a close. So if Melody, if you want to come back, Melody, we're going to blame Melody if she keeps you late, not me, okay? So Jared, if, if, if we stay late, it's Melody's fault today. So praise the Lord. Um, let's pray uh, while, while they all get ready. Let, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for the counsel of your word. We thank you that we can have wisdom because you said it. You said that if we ask, that you would give it to us generously. Thank you for wisdom that you'll pour out upon us, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for other one another. Lord, I thank you for the people of this congregation. It truly is an awesome congregation. And I thank you, Lord God, that you use each of us to speak to one another. Not just me speaking to people, but each of us to minister and speak to one another. I thank you, Lord, that we can hear your voice. And I thank you, Lord God, that as we go out of here, Lord, that we're going to be waiting upon you, listening for you, to hear you, Lord, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we're, I know we're shifting gears here, uh, but if anyone needs prayer today after Melody, just, you know, after Melody does her thing, you all just, if anyone needs prayer, come up here and let us know so we can pray for you. Okay? Melody?
I kind of stopped reading from 1 Thessalonians this morning, um, right where he kind of picked up at. It says, do not extinguish the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, <laughs> but test all things, hold fast to what is good, and abstain from every evil. I uh, stopped right before that, <laughs> but the Lord gave me that scripture. But um, I also wanted to uh, read from Hosea 10:12, which is kind of an odd scripture uh, as it goes for past appreciation, but it says uh, that we should... I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. And many times when we think about um, sowing and reaping, we think about the money that we give, that if we give to God, that he's going to bless us back. But it's so much more than that. It's sowing love into others, sowing forgiveness into others, um, sowing patience into others. And um, so that's what we're going to do today. As, and as pastor has sowed into so many lives, we want to um, give back to him. So Pastor and Delaney come up, and we just want to pray over you. And I'll, I'll present the card to you after the prayer, Gary. If anybody wants to come and join us, you're welcome to. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for Pastor David and Delany, Lord. We set aside this day to honor them and to thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing that they are to us, this congregation. And Lord, we just thank you for sending them to us. And Lord, we just ask your blessings upon them, Lord, as you give him vision for this congregation, Lord, that it will shine bright in every detail, God, as you lead him and guide him into the future that you have for us. I pray, God, that you bless him with strength, that the joy of the Lord would be his strength. I pray that you bless him, Lord, financially. I pray you bless him physically with health, Heavenly Father. As long as his days are, so shall his strength be, Lord. I pray that you strengthen him, Lord. And I pray that you, I thank you, God, that you have promised him provision. And I thank you, Lord, that you are answering that. And, Lord, they see your provision in every area. And we bless them now, Lord, with every blessing from above. And, Lord, let your love, Lord, so surround him and his family. God, that as you... As he meets each new day, Lord, he experiences your goodness and mercy through that love, Lord. We just thank you that you give him open doors and opportunities, Lord, that his heart desires to serve you. And we just thank you, Lord, for just every day, Lord, whatever his heart's desire is, God, God, that you would just grant him, Lord, assuredness that you are preparing the way. God, that you are making the plans in advance, and God, you are helping him to fulfill what you have desired him to do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your light that guides us and for confirmation from your people, Lord, and for the contacts that he needs. Lord, we praise you for them and thank you for them. And Lord, we just pray every blessing upon him. And Gary wanted to pray as well. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you that Dave and Delany were obedient to come here, Father. We just thank you for them. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We just thank you for continuing to lead them and guide them to be able to guide this church in the right directions, Father, that you want to go, that you want to be done. And we just thank you for your presence becoming more and more every day and every week, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you for protecting them and their whole family. 
cover them with the blood of Jesus. And Father, we just bind Satan from coming against us in any way. In Jesus' name, amen.